Good morning, fifth grade. Wow, it is almost close to my bedtime. I never record math lessons this late, so let's make this as quick and short and succinct as possible. This is lesson 17. We're talking about multiplying by one-digit numbers, which if you stumbled into your math after test 2 yesterday, we already got a jump start on, right? So let's start off with just a quick little review. Remember this page from Lesson 13? If they were asking you to find how many desks there were, I have four rows with six desks in each, right? I could have counted each desk. Yeah, but that's not going to be fun. I could add each row of six four times. Six plus six plus six plus six. I added it four times. Or I could multiply it six times 4. So I showed you this because I want to reiterate. Multiplying is repeated addition. You're going to need to remember this when we get to a couple of word problems at the end. But let's kick off right now with just a review of the multiplication algorithm, right? Even if the book has the problem set up horizontally, I think there is not a fifth grader around who knows to set them up vertically, right? You line them up nice, neat, and straight on the right-hand side, and then you're going to go about and treat it pretty much like regular addition as well. Only you're multiplying. But the rules of carrying work the same, with one small exception. So let's start. 6 times 5 is 30, right? You're multiplying everything by the bottom digit. 5 times 6 is 30. I have to write down my 0 right below this column. And I'm going to go and put a plus 3 just like when I am adding, right? So then I'm down on the bottom again. I'm ready to go and multiply my next digit. 5 times 3 is 15. But I put plus 3 at the top, right? 5 times 3 is 15, but plus 3 more makes it 18. I am hoping there are not too many people here who are unaware of the algorithm, but I know there's a few that are going to stumble on your facts, right? And it's up to you to keep practicing, practicing, practicing. All right, here we have slightly larger 819 times 5. Let's start with the 5 times 9. That gives us 45. I'm going to bring my 4 up to the next column over to the left. 5 times 1 is 4, plus 4 more. Hey, that makes 9. And then I'm going to do my last digit. 5 times 8 is 40. I can write both digits down like that because I don't have any place else to carry it, right? I don't have to carry my 4 over because there's no digit there. We'll do one more, I think. 9 times 7 is 63. I'm going to write down my 3. And I'm going to carry my 6 to the next digit over, right? 9 times 0 is 0 according to the 0 property of multiplication. And I'm going to add 6 more to it. 0 plus 6, hey, that's 6. And lastly, I'm going to go 9 times 6 is 54. Again, I don't have any digits to carry that 5 over, so I can write both the 5 and the 4. 5,463. So now I'm hoping we're pretty solid with the algorithm, but we also have some story problems to contend with. And you always want to check the directions, what it's telling you. Check out this one. Each morning, there are three classes that are 50 minutes long. Check out what they are asking you to do. Show how to find the answer by adding 
and multiplying. What they mean by these directions is they want you to set up two separate problems. They don't want you to add and multiply all together in one problem. So let's do it first by adding. Three classes, 50 minutes long each. That's the old sum plus some more plus some more plus some more, right? 50 plus 50 plus that third 50, right? And we've counted by 50s in class before, right? Everybody in this room should be able to do it. Let's start with the first one right here after I'm done writing. 50 plus another 50 is 100 plus that third 50 is 150, right? That's how it would look by adding. Then they also want you to find it again by multiplying. 50 times 3. And 50 times 3, well, let's go ahead and break out that multiplication algorithm, should we? 3 times 0, hey, 3 times 0 is 0. Let's go ahead and do 3 times 5. 3 times 5 is 15. The important part is please make sure if you show it two different ways that you end up with the same answer, right? If you showed it once by adding and again by multiplying and you have a different answer, you know you have a mistake there somewhere. Check out this one. This is what it says. Nick bought three gallons of milk for $4.96 each. How much money did he spend? Show the answer by multiplying. This is only a multiplying problem, right? So I'm going to set it up again. $4.96. Nice, neat, and straight. The biggest problem I see is kids just being too sloppy. Okay? Each one of these gallons of milk costs $4.96. How many did he buy? He bought three of them. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply it by three, right? Lined up nice, neat, and straight on my right-hand side. Let's start off the multiplication algorithm. Six times three is 18. I'll write down my eight. I am going to carry my 1. I'm going to go ahead and multiply by that second digit. 3 times 9 is 27, plus my 1 more. That's 28. And lastly, I'm going to carry my 2 to the next column. One more digit to contend with. 3 times 4 is 12, plus 2 more. That's 14, but guess what? This is a money problem, right? If you have dollars and cents in the problem, you would better have dollars and cents in the answer because there's a huge difference between $14.88, and if you don't have your decimal point, that makes it $1,488. Big difference, right? Here we have Nathan had five quarters in his pocket. Write and solve a multiplication equation that shows the value of his money. So we are actually going to have to use a variable here, right? So we have five quarters in his pocket. Five times what? Five times quarter? I can't put quarter down. What is a quarter? A quarter is 25 cents, right? So you can write it as 0 0.25 with the dollar sign in front. And do we know the value of his money according to the problem, maybe you know it in your mind right now, but no, actually we don't. 
So this is the part, because they want an equation, you have to write a variable. I'm going to pick H for Heinz, right? All right. Do I have terms to combine, or can I isolate a variable? It's so easy, it's almost hard. Not anymore, though. I'm going to combine these terms right away. I read my equation left to right. 5 times 25 cents, hey, that is $1.25, right? And then I did not underline the equal sign, and I did not underline the H. And it's as simple as that, right? Okay. The end. You're definitely going to want a scratch piece of paper and a pencil for your Socrative quiz. Good luck.